Welcome to another weekend here on the platform. My name is Sam Omashe. Welcome to Big Talk. My guest today is legislative. It's none other than the senator representing Lagos East, Senator Tokumbo Abiru. Welcome to this show. You've, you've been in the legislative uh, cockpit for about, uh, we're going to four years now, say three years. Mm -hmm. How has it been? Thank you very much, Sam. Um, uh, incidentally, I've been in this saddle for just about 17 months now, to be precise. Yes. Because, exactly. Yes, so so yeah. I came in by way of a by election. So by I haven't spent, I haven't spent, spent that much. I haven't spent good, that much good, of the time. Good. Yeah, so I need good to correct. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So for me, um, it's like a second career in my life, uh, in my life story, in the story of my life. You know, um, as you are aware, I'd spent a considerable amount of time in the, my first earlier call, which is banking, banking which yeah. was my uh, original profession. You know, spent close to about 30 years there before I retired in um, 2020. You understand now? Um, so for me, a very good experience, um, and I think that is a call that is also uh, well-intentioned because um, it's, um, it's like being part of the governance of the country. I've, I haven't played a, uh, a major role in the private sector. So for me, I, I think that um, it has afforded me the opportunity to see, to understand um, our society better, let me put it that way. Um, and I'm starting with the constituents, and also to see how the, um, the legislative role too is being also being done. Mm. So for me, I think it's been a very good experience. I will still speak more to it as we get to Yeah, along. what would you call the highlights of it? You know, you took over from um, uh, Oshinawa. Correct. Who unfortunately passed on through, to, through uh, COVID. Mm. And he too mm. had just um, become mm. senator. I haven't spent such a long time in the Lagos mm. uh, legislature mm. and so on. So how was it taking over from, from him, uh, especially in the circumstances that, um, you, that uh, you had to be stepped into? <laughs> okay, so for me, I think number one, um, um, we pray that Almighty Allah will continue to have repose on the soul of the yes. um, late senator. Because, I mean, that was quite um, uh, well, unexpected. Would, unexpected. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's the way life is as yes, well. Yes. So, and um, I would say that um, the legislative role, as much as it will appear very new to me, mm. I think that um, the build up to even um, getting the, um, what's it called, I mean, uh, winning the election mm. was, I mean, actually afforded me an opportunity to also begin to understand some of the issues of what representation is all about. So um, if you recall, the election period spanned almost a period of three months, yes. you know, which also gave me the opportunity to also crisscross almost every nook and cranny of the constituency that is covering um, Lagos East, yes. senatorial district. So, uh, and exactly. I'm being a by-election, which is not something I, I think I want to look forward to. You, know, you are the only... <laughs> Everybody, the exactly, whole world is focused the, on exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> the focus is on you. Yes. So, so you needed to go through almost all the nooks and crannies of, um, um, of the district. Oh, it's the shocks coming from... Uh, uh, banking, you were right? a commissioner, yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that gave you a little sense about uh, what politics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but not representational politics. Now this, this this one was was down there mm. talking to the people and yeah, so on. Yes, yes. yes. The one thing I can tell you is that number one, I had the number one. I was to give it to the platform of the party that we yes. are riding on. Yes. You know, they prepared me adequately for this. Yes. So in the sense that they put in a team that was very strong and experienced. Mm. You know, and um, so um, that team actually got me well organized. You understand? Although it required some of my input. So. Um, but again, I'll be dealing with people that you know, I'm just getting, to, I mean, getting used to, which wasn't a problem. I haven't managed you know, I mean, a large um, corporation before, oh, yeah. so it's not a problem managing any, um, any team. And um, 
Um, so for me, um, that, that platform of the APC, mm. right, that supported me, mm. actually guided me along the path of, you know, moving around the entire district. Um, mm. As you may be aware, we have about five local governments. Mm. That's Ikorodu, Koshofe, mm. um, uh, Ibejuleki, um, Ekwe, and Shomono and Bariga. And we have 11 LCDs, meaning 16. So we went, actually went to all the 16 local, I mean, those 16 local government and LCDs. Mm. Now, because of my background again, anywhere I went, I always have, you know, just like I have here yeah. with me, a notepad. Mm. So I take conscious, I mean, I know very copious notes of some of my experience with people mm. when we are meeting, whether it's a rally. Mm. So from there, you begin to understand the people issues. So, um, so getting into the saddle, at least I had an idea of what I think my approach, and the, how the approach should be. There's also this uh, connection that you had to make with the street. Mm. You know, when I was um, working uh, a book with uh, the late uh, Ajimobi of, uh, of Oyo State, the yeah. governor of mm. Oyo State, his wife was really surprised at him moving from the top of the you know, corporate world and suddenly at home they mm. were seeing all kinds of people coming to the house <laughs> that they were not seen before okay. and so on and the wife mm. was like, no, you're not used to this crowd. How are, are, you, you, gonna... are you coming to, uh, how, how are you going to deal with this? And the husband said, it's in my blood mm. and uh, eventually he was able to do it. How mm. did you... Okay, yeah, that, that's that. That. Well, 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 well. So for me too, it wasn't really much of a shock. Yeah. You know, so maybe I play back to my background. So, okay. I, I mean, um, <clears throat> by training, I'm a qualified accountant. Yes. And I almost immediately after I left Akitola Williams in 1990 or 90, 1991, to be precise, I joined Guarantee Trust. Yes. Spent about 10 years in Guarantee Trust, and I moved on to First Bank in 2002, to be precise. 2002, early 2002. Mm -hmm. And as you may, as you, we all know, you see, First Bank in itself too, mm -hmm. it's more like a mini Nigeria. Yes. So, and I went through, the, I spent about 15 years in First Bank. So I got accustomed to how, so in all, I would say that um, once you're accustomed to any organizational setting mm -hmm. and you understand the norms properly and you, are all, you also allow yourself to pass through properly. I'm sure surviving in any environment shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, I mean, um, by the time I came into this, I saw it number one as service. Number two, like service will involve people because mm -hmm. you have to render and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then um, moving around the um, district too. Yes, I mean, uh, you might say, I, you, know, you know, I was encountering new set of stakeholders, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. It, it wasn't a big problem for me. Mm -hmm. Then again, don't forget the fact that I'm also a Nikorudu boy as well. Mm. I grew up in, um, well, I grew, actually grew up in Shomolu Arena because okay. I lived for the better part of my early years in Bagada. Bagada. So okay. these are areas that I'm accustomed to. So even in the course of the campaign, when I move around, I see old faces that I've seen maybe 30, 40 years ago. So for me, and again, I mean, I'll give it to the APC platform too. And that support didn't make me look any different from I mean, I didn't feel any not, sense of alienation at all. At all, I felt at home with my yeah. with the people generally. Okay, now um, being a, a technocrat and getting into politics <laughs> is like crossing a bridge. In in the world of uh, technocracy, everything is structured. Mm. You bring the file. <laughs> Mr. B is supposed to do A and two. I'm supposed to go through a particular process. It comes to you, you sign it, you hold a meeting. A is supposed to go to Shomolu and report and give you data and so on and so forth. When you come to politics, you meet a different set of people. It's not as choreographed. It's actually more spontaneous and more chaotic. And the more chaotic, the more beautiful it is. How do you move from one set of beauty to another? <laughs> <laughs> that, is very, that is very spot on. So, but again, you see, it's all about organizing at the end of the day. Mm. And you see, in and, um, organizing, and more particularly service, I will continue to emphasize service. Yeah. So in my instance, you know, part of what came in, and I, um, I will be, I mean, uh, that, I mean, that 
struck me as I was setting it in immediately after the election was the need to say, look, how do I ensure that this district that has been given to me uh, to represent, how do I ensure that I kind of make an impact across without any part of that, uh, any part of the district, you know, any part of the, the district feeling somehow neglected. So the first thing I did, if I, yeah, the first thing I did was very early in 2021, January to be precise, because I was sworn in, I think, on the 15th of December 2020, after which the Senate went on the Christmas recess. Yes, yeah. So the first thing I did was to kind of put together a survey that I called um, a needs assessment. So take an, do an assessment of the entire district and try to understand the needs, values, and all of the things that you think that you should focus on. And, and I will be very quick to tell you that the first thing that came out of that survey too was the need to set up, you know, um, representation in almost all the five critical local governments within the district. So and what, I'm, what I'm saying in essence is that I, number one, started with Ikorodu, which is of, of course my own, um, um, yes. my, my base, you know. Um, I, and even during the campaign, I had a very well set up constituency office there. So I maintained that structure. Mm. Then the four other major local governments, I, I set up what I call a constituency um, outreach there. So in Ekwe, you know, had an outreach and I make sure that it is well manned so there is somebody there that can listen and also get input from that area and send it in. In Koshofe, the same, in Shomolu, the same. And on the back of that too, Given my background, I mean, my, 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 my own expertise and exposure, mm -hmm. is also to set up a technology platform mm -hmm. that can also connect the three of us, I mean, the five locations together. So, so while I'm in a... To integrate to, yeah, Exactly, yes. to integrate. So when there is a request or information, you process it on the platform, it comes to the main whatever. Even for me, I mean, myself being in Ikorodu, it comes to me, so I deal with all the files there. I deal with requests. There's some other requests that I've also given respective responsibility to the various um, outreach. You understand? So for me, I, it, I mean, it might not be perfect, mm. you know, but I can tell you that largely it has helped me in, in settling down and it's also meeting the expectations of the people. Okay. Um, going into the Senate chambers, it must be a peculiar culture. How were you received, and how did you um, how did you now get into the system? <laughs> <laughs> again, so again, um, I would say that the um, the culture around the National Assembly, particularly the Senate, is one that I refer to as a very warm and a mature one. Um, I, uh, right from the inauguration in December, I think I got the warmth and the support of my fellow colleagues, starting mm -hmm. with the leadership of the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, that's the president of the, the Senate, Senate. His, uh, His Excellency um, um, Senator Hamad uh, Lawan, and also all the major principal officers. I had met them in the mm -hmm. even before they went on recess, and mm -hmm. they had actually reached out to me even before I came in, the moment I won the election. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I'm also giving to my other, my other colleagues from Lagos mm -hmm. in particular, Sen His Excellency Senator Ulure Mitinubu, mm -hmm. and, of course, uh, Senator Yayi. Of mm -hmm. course, they, you know, uh, they rallied around me and mm -hmm. also gave me a very, what I can describe as soft landing. Yeah. So, and of course, I give it to the other, my other colleagues there. They were, um, they believe that um, I'm coming with some strength and I also, and of course, they also supported me in settling down. And I, I didn't have any difficulty in settling into the system at all. So I'm part and parcel of the system as we speak today. So how has it been, being uh, a senator and uh, combining the work of legislature mm. and that of also connecting with your constituency because you make it you make you're supposed to make laws mm. and the laws are for mm. yeah it's supposed mm. to affect your constituency but you're actually a senator of the federal republic of right. nigeria right. so how do you now navigate yeah. both uh, connections mm. <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> again um you know, given the, I think my background as well has prepared me for mm. most of these kind of responsibility anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, so uh, right from this get-go, I also had mapped out what I think the role 
how do I navigate through this responsibility? Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said earlier, the needs assessment that are done covered almost all the needs and values that mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. as a legislator mm -hmm. one should champion. Mm -hmm. So, what I, the way I now approached it was also to look at my role from different, from the expectations of the people. One, you have to look at your role as a legislator. Then, of course, um, so by that, you know, you are expected to be making laws or, poli or influencing policies that will impact the larger society yes. from, Niger from the federal level to the state and, of mm. course, to your constituency. Mm. Now, equally, because, again, the way and manner we have all, I mean, I mean um, we have seen the political terrain in the last 20 years thereabout, there are issues around empowerment and all of that, which of course I'm sure yeah. we'll get into it as we get along. Yeah. I mean, people have gotten accustomed to. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? So you've got to know how to handle, how to handle it. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> but again, I also think, which is a second pillar as to my approach. Now, the last one, which I also had to add into my own focus as a third pillar, is what I call endowment. Mm. And by that, you know, what I try to bring on board is to say that given the prior career that I had had and the exposure and also the uh, <clears throat> competencies one had acquired, it was important that I also come to this play with some kind of give back to society, which I would describe as, you know, using my own, you know, personal resources mm -hmm. and, um, also the good we one had gathered mm. over right. the years to see how we can impact on the lives of people. Mm. So my approach is essentially around three pillars, the legislative role, the empowerment role, mm. and of course the endowment role. And as we get along, I will speak yes, to all I'll of them. Yeah, I'll speak to each of them. Yeah. Speak to each of them. Yes, okay. yeah, to speak to each of them. Okay, <laughs> very good. So, so again, so let me start with the legislative role. Oh, In yes. the legislative role, of course, the role, the expectation is to make laws that will impact society, the country, mm -hmm. and also improve um, on policies and all of that. So in that, I'm, I'm happy to say that within the short period that I've been there, it's under, it's just precisely about 17 months, mm -hmm. I've been able to make meaningful contributions and by way of bills and motions. Mm -hmm. And I'll be very quick, I mean, I mean um, I'll just make some remarks on some of the bills and the motions that mm -hmm. I, I think um, has very strong impact on society. An example is the copyright um, act that we have in this country. It's been, the last time it was reviewed was um, before we came into, I mean, before we, I mean, um, we came into the current republic, which yes. is, um, um, I mean, that is before 1999. So, mm -hmm. and of course, you will agree with, with me that a lot of evolution has since come up. Especially yes, in technology. In technology and even creativity, creativity and all of yeah. that. So there is need to kind of um, reward that kind of mm -hmm. act. So, and I'm happy to report that that was um, largely supported by even the executive arm mm. of, the, of, the, of, the, of the government because it started out as a private member bill, but of course an executive bill also came along the line to complement those and the, the workings on that. And I'm also happy to report that that particular bill has gone through a first reading, a second reading, mm. gone through public hearing, and it has been finally passed by the Senate. Mm. So as we speak today, we already um, receiving attention by way of concurrence in the House of Reps. And we are hoping that before the end of this particular ninth National Assembly, we probably will have a new Copyright Act. And what, was, we what was the challenge getting that bill together? No, there wasn't. It was a matter of just researching it properly. Detail, yeah. yeah, and more importantly, I think it's part of uh, it's a bill that will also help particularly our young minds and the young, the young creatives you understand, and the, because of their, uh, um, um, the, 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 uh, um, the flair of um, technology that we have within our, within the world, I mean, in the world today. So, um, so there wasn't any problem at all, but again, we believe strongly that it will help our micro, small, and medium enterprises in terms of getting value for their creative um, um, ideas and all of that. Okay. You understand, that is on that part. We are also working on um, what I also describe as the franchise bill as well. The, um, the franchise bill too is a bill that speaks to the 
to, to entrepre entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship as well. Exactly. So, exactly. Country, yeah. so, so those are the kind of um, 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 eye-impacting deals that I think we need in, this, in our society. We use the word franchise very loosely, mm -hmm. but we know it exists, but there is really no law yeah. guiding it. That has just gone through a second region now. We are awaiting a public hearing, we are, and we are very hopeful that we will make sure that um, we also get it completed before this night's assembly well, winds up. There's a sense that these are bills that are one way or the other connected with your whole career Correct. in business. Yes. yes. Rightly so. So it's part of what I'm bringing on board. Yes. So, I mean, and it's to help. Because, you see, one thing we have to be mindful of is that look, when you look at those MSMEs, they actually account for over 65% of employment that we have. So we must try and come up with, you know, policies that will support them, mm -hmm. will support them. That is the whole essence. So another legislative role that I'd like to mention is that part of what my um, engagement at the, within um, needs assessment also threw up is certain infrastructure within the belt that I cover. That's the Lagos yeah. East Senatorial District, which has also received very good attention. So um, you have major federal roads. Mm. You know, in particular, you have the Lagos, uh, you have the Ikorodu Shagamu. And if you understand the, um, the connectivity in my district, you know, there is um, a linkage between the other part of the country that is from Either you're coming from the north to Ogun State, mm -hmm. Shagamu will lead you to Ikorodu. Ikorodu can lead, lead you to um, Ekwe. From Ekwe, you are back in Lagos. Yes. Now, the, the, what that motion, motion tries to address is the fact that, that the challenge of that road has since been identified. However, um, um, the implementation, which is by budgetary allocation, has been very, very slow very, very slow. So you can imagine a road, a particular corridor that has a lot of manufacturing companies. Because if you look at that belt, yes, the Korodu that, that belt that's where you easy. find most of the metal manufacturing companies mm -hmm. and all of that. So you see trailers struggling with raw materials to efficiency and effectiveness is almost at a very low help. Then you have also some academic institutions around that belt. Mm -hmm. So there is need for us to quickly, as a matter of urgency, if we must enhance you know, um, business, uh, you know, and attract and make business more effective and efficient to make sure that such corridor, are, uh, you know, you, you, you fix the infrastructure that is needed. Mm -hmm. So um, for a contract that has been since, since been awarded since 2018, and this is almost four years after, not completed. So, um, but again, I must also give it to my colleagues in the Senate, you know, mm -hmm. they welcomed the motion and they also realized that it's also important that it should be um, uh, supported, mm -hmm. and with that support, I must also give. I must also commend some. I mean, um, some. I mean, some of my um, predecessors in office because the whole idea started with them. I mm -hmm. I mean, my if I came in in 2021, mm -hmm. I mean, and for something that has been on since 2020, so that means somebody must have been at the forefront. Mm -hmm. So starting from the likes of Senator Ashafa, mm -hmm. who probably I mean, who mooted the idea, yeah. even my other colleague in the House of Reps, um, Jimmy Benson, Honorable Jimmy, mm -hmm. they've also made contributions that have seen it um, to where it was as at the time I took it on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and by my measurement then, and in terms of performance, I think it would, they had only done about 24% or 25%, you know, implementation in terms of fixing the road. Okay, the second half of this interview will continue next week. Stay tuned. Here is my poem in the series, The Politician. He is a pariah to his party, even when they party. Since Brutus, many ingredients make a renegade. To betray is the season, any time, any clime. Thank you for being on this show. You can join my column at www.samomashe.com and my Twitter at samomashe. And until next time, be good.